Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. I don't know about you, but this is this is the day that they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give him some praise this morning. He is worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. I know we got few, few and not here today, but you know, we are mighty in power, amen? Amen. Saints, let's help the praise and worship team as they bring forth a song, amen? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Another day that God has allowed us to see. He's opened the door today and allowed us to be here. So we owe God a praise this morning. Will you praise the Lord with me? He's given us reason after reason after reason to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. So come along and praise the Lord with me. you but we should be here giving them something we know when the praises go up that the blessings come down if you need some blessing then we need to do some praising in his house amen i don't know about you but i know what happened coming up on friday amen so i just want to give him some praise all this week leading up to friday and then grateful on sunday that he got up with all power amen so we should be here giving god some praise this morning amen and at this time, we'll have our morning hymn by our praise team as well. Amen.
Amen, amen. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading by our deacon, Wilbur Barber, followed by a prayer by our deacon, McNeil. Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart should not, shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in the days of, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Give me a minute. These pages are sticking together. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, shall he set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry, have mercy upon me and answer me. When I say it, seek it, my face, my heart says, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not open to the will of my, my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such is breathed of cruelty. I have fainted unless I have waited. And waited I, I have fainted unless I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the doing of his word this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Baptist Temple. Let us look to the Lord. Most gracious and precious Father, thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to see another new day which never seen before. Thank you, Father, for new grace and new mercy. Thank you, Father, how you watched over us last night as we slept and slumbered, Lord God, allowing no harm to come to us, Father. Father, even when we were asleep, Father, not knowing what was going on around us, Father, you had angels stationed by our bedsides last night. And then you touched us this morning, my Father, just allow us to see another day one more time, Father, allowing us to know that you were not done with us yet. So for that, I just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for health and strength this morning, Father, for being clothed in our right mind, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to go down into our kitchens this morning, Father, to pick and choose what we wanted to eat this morning, my Father, that we were able to go to our closets to pick and choose what we wanted to wear this morning, my Father. Things that, Father, that we take for granted, Lord God. I just thank you, Lord God, because it's only through your grace and mercy that we have these things. So I just say thank you for that. Father, I just want to thank you for traveling mercy this morning, Father, to make it out to your house of prayer just one more time. Father, I just ask you just to forgive us of our many sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Things that we have said, things that we have thought, and things that we have done, Father, that was displeasing in your sight. Things that we have buried down and suppressed so far down that we may have forgotten about. Father, I'm asking you even right now just to remove it, Father, just in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, I pray even right now, Father, that you would just allow us just to forget about ourselves, forget about the things that's going on out in the world right now, Father, that we may concentrate on you even right now, Father. Father, I'm just asking you right now just to come inside back to simple for just a little while, Father. The preacher cannot preach. The choir cannot sing. We cannot lift up our hands unless you come in this morning, my Father. So, Father, I'm just asking you even right now to come in, my Father, just to touch 
heal and forgive this morning, Father. Someone looking for a blessing this morning, my Father. And Father, I'm praying even right now that you just touch them right now in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus. Father, I'm praying that you just touch the preacher this morning, Father. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet, Father. Touch his tongue this morning, my Father, that when he opens his mouth, Father, that you will be able to speak to us through him this morning, my Father. Let the word bring conviction this morning. Let it bring healing, my Father. Let it bring satisfaction this morning, my Father. Let it bring verification this morning, my Father, that you are still alive today, Father, and that you are coming back soon to look for a church without a spot nor a wrinkle, my Father. I just thank you even right now for my Baptist Simple family, Lord God. I ask you even right now that you just continue to bless us all in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, because you said whatever we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, and have faith and not doubt, that you would do, Lord God. So I'm praying even right now that you would just touch, heal, and forgive this morning. Bless those who have a desire to be here but could not, Father. And I'm praying for those who are on their way here right now. Grant them traveling mercy in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we just want to give you the praise this morning, my Father. We just want to give you all the honor and all the glory because you are worthy. You are worthy and you are worthy. We just want to say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because you've been so good, Lord God. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. All these blessings that I ask in Jesus' name I pray. My soul, my soul and heart says amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have announcements by Sister Darty Scott. Amen? Amen. Sorry, Trustee Darty Scott. I don't want no trouble. Good morning, everyone. Happy Palm Sunday. Good Friday service. The seven last words will be held 12 noon on Friday, March 29th at Christ Care Unit Missionary Baptist Church in Sicklerville. And our own interim pastor, Reverend Scott, and Reverend Jackson will bring the word. So if you can come out and support them and support and also have Austin in the service. Also, any BTC choir members are welcome to sing with the mass choir on that day. Um, there's no pre rehearsal, and you just ask to wear black. On March 31st, the Sunday School will present what Jesus means to me at 9 a.m. Please come out and support our young people. Also on Easter Sunday, the Daniel Fast will end. Save the date. The Couples Ministry will have a date night on Friday, April 19th at 6.30. The location is Omega's Restaurant in Merchantville. All are invited. Come and invite another couple. Please RSVP by March 31st so reservations can be secured. On Saturday, April 20th, the Women's Ministry will have an afternoon tea party here at BTC. I have some additional information. It will start from, it starts at noon to 4 p.m. It's a free will offering event. The theme is Fill My Cup. We will have a guest um, preacher, Reverend Dr. Rosalind D. Collins. So just come out and support the women's ministry on April 20th. Christian Education Sunday School for All Ages is 8.45 a.m. every Sunday morning. New members classes meet also at 8.45 a.m. Wednesday night Bible study every week at 7 p.m. and inspire conference calls every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Our sick and shut in, Deacon is Deborah Brown, Sister Angel Knight, Sister Carrie Miller, Sister Hasna Thornton, Sister Deborah Jones, Sister Brenda McDaniel, Sister Diane Robinson, and Sister Wilda Torres. Um, we regret to inform you that James Norman's sister, um, Viola Honey, passed away this week. If you please keep James Norman and the Honey family in your prayer. And information, service information is forthcoming. Also, um, those of you may have to know, um, Sister Betty Yancey, um, she passed away this week. And um, her daughter used to be a member here, Angela. So please keep that family in your prayers also. Also, in addition to the sick, I um, apologize, if you could please um, add on um, Reverend Logan's mother, you could please keep her in prayer. Um, and also continue to keep Sister uh, Michelle Bourne's mother also in prayer. 
Also, um, um, our virtual member, Sister Tammy Jones, is in service today. Where's Tammy? There's Tammy back there. So if y'all want to speak to our member, that's your sister in Christ. And your Amen. Good to see you face to face. While I was up here, while I was up here giving announcements, they over here chatting and saying it's all quiet in here. So I was, th I'm thinking, why, why is it um, so quiet in here? Today is Palm Sunday. And you can just think about um, Christ's sacrifice and our love, His unconditional love for us. I don't think it would be so quiet if you just think about what happened and then what's going to happen next week. So my thought for today is think on today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, this is Palm Sunday. And we should be celebrating because we know what this means to us today. We serve a mighty God. We ask that you would govern yourself according to the announcements then yes, we would love to welcome all our visitors, those who are here on live stream. Sister Tammy, you want to stand up and say something to my sister? All right, yes, yes, yes. She's been on there with us and we bless her and we got God to bless her when she just keep on going. Truly, we serve a mighty God. Um, again, Baptist Temple, we, we ask that you will come out to Bible study and Sunday school. This is a blessing for you that God will continue to help you grow, help us grow as we learn his words. Um, next, this week, this Friday, the seven last words. Again, we ask all that can and will go with us. Um, Deacon Barber is driving the van, so if you need to um, uh, get up there, you need a ride, please get in touch with him. We also um, ask that uh, uh, we make sure we get the directions to everybody. So those who are driving, don't get lost. We want you there. We don't want you to say, I got lost on the midst of coming to see the seventh last word. Um, Baptist Temple, I, I, I like to uh, thank Sister Martina um, for an awesome <laughs> job and, and, and bringing us to to be able to go out and see something that is so wonderful. Uh, we went to see a play called The Resurrection. Uh, I went on Friday night, I went before everybody went, so we seen it first. It was like a Broadway show. No, 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 see, a Broadway show praising the Lord because the whole show was about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When they gave us a little snip of what they were going to do, if you were there, you would think you was in New York on a Broadway show in Camden High's Auditorium. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you because you have opened some eyes open to what God can do. You don't have to always be in Baptist Temple, but God can do. And I thank you for that. We had an awesome experience. Um, Sister Schultz. I, I want to uh, let you know, congratulate her on, on passing her license to be a uh, nurse. Listen, listen. It's a blessing, y'all. She retired from the Board of Education for 27 years. Then she went back to school and becoming, I know she probably won't say, well, you ain't had to say that, but, and become a nurse at the age of 61, 62, I'm sorry, a nurse at the age of 62. So, 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 no, there's no excuses out there, y'all. There's no excuses. God can and he will. Yes, he can and he will. So keep that her in prayer because Lord knows if she's going to be a nurse, we, she needs some prayer. Yes, she do. Thank you, Lord, for well, he's worthy to be praised. We're going to ask as they will bring the palms up. 
Hold on for a minute. Uh, Sister Doherty has something to say. Y'all, they opened the doors to the church after the play. They sure enough welcomed Christ in everybody's life in that auditorium. We serve a mighty God. I apologize. I just have an announcement for one of our youth here, Sanaya Austin. Mom, sorry. She was inducted into. Okay, sorry about that. Sanaya Austin was inducted into the National Honor Society. Hey, Amen. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's our youth, y'all. We need to stand and give praise because God is good. He's working in here, y'all. Side High School Auditorium. We are sitting here proud of you, Amen. 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 We have our palms. Um, I'm going to ask if Reverend Logan can come forth and pray on our palms this morning. Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace. Lord, we just come right now, Lord, to say thank you. Lord, we really do thank you, Lord. We know sometimes we go day to day, hour by hour, minute by minute, taking you and what you did for granted. But right now, Lord, we come right now collectively in your house to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we know, Father God, that you later on and Friday that you went to the cross, Father, that you took on a torture that we should have took, Father. Lord, we know it was the first time that, or any other time, only time that you were separated from your father and you did all that and he did all that just for us in the midst of our mess so lord we ask lord that we bless these palms father that we'll remember the life you lived how you died but more importantly that you were raised and that you have all glory and you have all power and because of you that we can live so, Lord, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, and we ask, Lord, that we just remember, put these palms away, that we can be reminded of your love so that we can give the love that you gave us. So, Lord, we thank you, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray with love and thanksgiving. Let the church say amen. Amen. It's time to give, saints. I don't know about you, but the more we give, the more he gives. So we should be giving a little bit more praise than that. Amen. We only give it back a portion of what he has given us. So once again, the ushers will be in charge as we give our tithes and our offerings. Amen.
Our Father God, Lord, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that were given today, Father, to build up and edify your kingdom, Father. Lord, we ask, Lord, you bless it, Father God. We ask that you bless the ones that could give, Father God, that, that and bless the ones that could not give, that maybe they'd be able to give next time, Father. We know that all things that we have come from you, Lord, so we are grateful and honored to just give back a portion of what you have given us, Father. So, Lord, we thank you, we honor, and we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time to hear a word from the Lord, saints. Let me just say that one more time. It's time to hear a word from the Lord, saints. I don't know about you, but I come in to hear a word so I can leave out of here better than the way I came in. Amen? And we have a man of God from our own house, Reverend Jackson, who we know who has studied, we know who has prepared, and we know that he's going to give a word for us to leave out of here with. Amen? Also, Reverend Jackson is running for the senior pastor of this house of Zion. Amen? Amen. So we just ask that you give him some amens. We, give you, we ask that you give him some thank you, Lord. We ask that you give him some claps as he is preaching. Amen. If not, I ask him to hold us here for a couple hours. Amen. But we need to give him some amens. Amen. Because he has studied and prepared. Amen. So the next voice that you will hear from this podium will be from our own Reverend Craig Jackson. Amen. Yeah. 
will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I was made to worship. You were made to worship. So let's give God some praise in the house of the Lord. If God woke you up this morning and brought you to the house of worship, you should worship. So let's give God some praise. If you hear you might as well praise him anyhow. Let's give God some praise. God has revealed himself to you. When you didn't have a dime in your pocket, God made a way out of no way. How dare you sit on your praise? When you were sick in the hospital, God raised you up and you are here today because God made a way out of no way. When you should have lost your mind, hallelujah, God made a way out of no way. When you lost your job, you didn't lose your hope. God made a way out of no way. So let's give God some praise. Glory to his name. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is, this is the beginning of where we, be, we were able to, we can say we're saved. This is the beginning process. This is Holy Week and Palm Sunday just so happens to be the first day of Holy Week. So this is the time that we should really embrace and celebrate what the Lord has done for us. This is the day, the first day, on the way to our salvation. And this is the day we should be shouting, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, for another day worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God the one that made all things possible, the one that created the heavens and the earth and the sea below. We worship that God. We're here to celebrate that God. The God that woke you up and put food on your table, that's the God. The one that put a roof over your head, that's the God. The one that put some money in your bank account, that's the God. That's the one we come to worship. That's the one we come to worship. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. our Lord and Savior. And we should all say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful that we serve the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if he's done it for you, he'll do it for me. That's the God we serve. We come to lift his name up this morning, this Palm Sunday morning, giving God honor to God, his son, and the precious Holy Spirit, the triune God that we serve. And all those that come out to celebrate our Savior. I want to thank these great preachers in the pulpit. Amen. Giving honor to them and these great men of valor. Amen. Amen standing and armor bearers. Uh, I want to thank Deacon Barber, our chairman. I want to thank Deaconess, the chairman, chairwoman of the Deaconess Ministry. Amen. 
It just so happens that she's my wife. Give an honor to you, my dear. Amen. And all those that come out to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. But more importantly, I, I want to say this. My family supports the call that God has on my life. And I say thank you to my family. I thank you because they see what goes on behind the scenes. They see the tears. They see the stress. They see all of that because the word of God is falling upon me first. And how am I supposed to take this word, this, 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 the magnitude of the responsibility and take this word and present it to you? They see that, and I say thank you. My wife, thank you so much for 26 years. Amen. Amen. God has given me an assignment this morning, and we're going to come out of the gospel of John. Not the synoptic gospel, but the gospel of John. We're going to come out of the 12th chapter, and we're going to read four verses, 12 through 16. And this kind of gives us a snapshot of what happened during this time over 2,000 years ago. Amen? The Gospel of John, 12th chapter, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Bless he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bless is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and these things had been done to him. Thus ends the reading of God's word for God's people. And I would like to talk from the thought today. The stage has been set for victory. The stage has been set for victory. So this, th this is something that we need to look forward to. Amen. That sometimes things are not exactly what they seem. Mm -hmm. Don't let the, the fancy clothes and the nice car and the nice house fool you. Right. Because you can have all these things, but your bank account might not exude what is on display. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got nice things, but you're broke. Huh? Can I make it plain? Sometimes things don't appear. You got all these things, but when you go to the ATM, you don't want nobody behind you. Amen? Huh? Or when you go to purchase something, you don't want to hear that funny noise at the cash register. Huh? Sometimes things are not exactly what they appear. But on the flip side, sometimes things can look really dreary going on in your life. Sometimes. Sometimes, guess what? Things can just look bad going into your life. But just because it looks like defeat, it could really mean delivery. Sometimes, just when all hope looks lost, that is the setup for your victory. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, but if you got your spirit and your faith in the Lord, everything will work out. This is Palm Sunday, so this is the beginning of Holy Week. So the stage has been set. It's already been planned before the earth was even made. This plan 
was already put in place. And today is the stage where they're setting up the stage. They're putting the props in. You got to rehearse your lines. Huh? Act one. Bam! Action. Now here we are. Jesus is coming in to Jerusalem. He's coming in to Jerusalem and people are expecting him because there's this huge festival that's going on at that particular time. It was a festival that everybody would come in. Everybody would come in to see this festival. But more importantly, people didn't just come in to see the festival. They came in to see this miracle that happened previously. What Jesus did was, Jesus actually brought someone from the dead. He brought his best friend from the dead, Lazarus. And word got out. You know how we do. Word is faster than the internet. Huh? Gossip spread faster than the internet. Right? Word got out, and people was like, oh, he defies and disrespects death? We got to come out to see this person. He must be the king. He must be the king. So the stage is set that everybody is looking for Jesus and Lazarus. But the thing about it is, there are other people that are there. Let me tell you, it's, this, this, this thing, is, they turned it up. Let me tell you, P. Diddy was there, Jay-Z was there, uh, R. Kelly was there. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, they, they, it was starstruck. Everybody was there. And they all had something to bring with them. Huh? This is the kicker. Even Trump was there. Trump was there. He was amongst the multitude. He was there. That's how lit this praise party was. All right? So, so here we are. The stage has been set. Jesus is on his way. Jesus picks out his, his mule. Now, you got to understand the significance of a mule. Now, back in those days, what it was is a king usually came in on a white horse. Jesus came in on a mule. What does that mean? It's significant simply because it meant that he was a king, but he came as a king of peace. That's the significance. Don't miss that one. He came as a king, but he didn't come as a king as a warrior. That comes later. Right now, he's coming in as the king of peace. So he comes in on a donkey, but see, this is the thing. When you don't read your Bible, you don't know this. Oh, can I get in your business? Sometimes you can't even tell the times because you're not in your Bible. You don't know, and you can't read the signs. So guess what? They weren't in their Bible. So they didn't recognize the fact that Jesus came in on a mule. So they was worshiping the warrior king, not the king of peace. So they're coming in. Yeah, we got everybody here to sing Jesus because we want Jesus to deal with the Roman Empire. If they had looked at his means of transportation, they would have known that, guess what? He's not coming for that. That's why it's so important for us to get into the word of God so you can read some of the things and you can discern some of the things that are going on in your life. So, so Jesus comes, and I'm telling you, everybody's there. The, the party's so lit that they're throwing their clothes in the street. They're throwing their clothes in the street. They're cutting down palm trees. Huh? And the significance behind the palms is victory. I need for you to start to connect the dots. 
is that he came in on a mule which symbolized the king of peace. When they saw him, they started waving these palms, which indicates victory. But the bad thing about what they were doing was they were worshiping the warrior king. I need somebody to figure this one out. Now, I want this to go over your head. What they were doing, they were worshiping the wrong God. They were worshiping the warrior. That comes much later. Hmm? When we get caught up, when all get caught up, huh? and then Jesus will come down like a mighty warrior, this wasn't that time. This was the time, this was the beginning of the process to our salvation. This is the process. This is the beginning. This is the grassroots of this plan that God had for us. So with that being said, we should shout hallelujah because the plan is in place. Hallelujah. Because without this plan, we're still lost in our sins. That means we're all doomed to go to hell. But this process is in place. And the Bible tells us that everybody was there. Good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter. And the Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered us from them all. But the Bible also says there's no one righteous, no, not one. And they were all there waving their palms, cheering Jesus on simply because they wanted him to deal with the Roman Empire. I'd like to point this out. All that we church folks have put God through, we've been in captivity for four, over 400 years, then we turned around and went back to prison and did another 70 years. We kept worshiping idol gods. And all that we did, you sit here and you want to deal with the Romans? How about God dealing with you? Sometimes we're always pointing the finger at somebody else's sin. That guess what? Maybe you need to deal with your own. The Bible tells us, it, it literally tells us, it says, you hypocrites. How you going, how you going to talk about the little, little, little splinter in my eye and when you got a big old log in yours? This is how, this is how it is in real life. Is that sometimes when someone irritates you and you want to just point the finger, they ain't really did nothing that bad. But what you did? Huh? This is, this is, this is how sin works. Sin is accusing sin. And you know what the bad thing about it is when sin accuses sin, both of y'all are going to hell. Both of you are going to hell. So this is the thing. The Jews are saying, yo, get the Roman empires. It's the same way when we hear the word of God and we start talking about our significant other, look, he should have been here for that word. No, no, no. You should have been here to hear that word. Sometimes that's how we think, is that guess what? He should have been heard that word. Maybe he would have made a difference. No. What God said is, I, I want you to hear the word, and I want you to deliver the message. And sometimes we miss that, is that God made us messengers. So we're more accountable than the Romans. God gave us his promises. God gave us his word. God gave us his favor. God loves us. And we turn around and we want to sit there and point the finger at someone else. So this is what we're going through. God gave us his promises. God said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am the truth and the life. He's given us these things. He's saying, um, I am. You fill in the blanks. He's everything you need. He said, I am the living water. He said, I'm the bread of life. 
he's given us all these things for us to absorb and we're sitting here looking at somebody else's sin. These are the things and these are the truths that we sometimes go through. Sometimes we can be so holy that we can be no earthly good. Sometimes we can sit there with our nose up in the air because of somebody else's sin. And just because your sin is not exposed, their sin is worse. So here we are. Israel is pointing the finger and neither should we when you think about how long you've been in the church. How long have you been underneath the word of God? Sometimes you just got to sit there and just be compassionate. Understanding and patient because that's exactly what God has been for you. That's how it should be. That you know what God has delivered you from. So now all of a sudden you want to compare sins? So here we are. God is saying, look, don't you dare point your finger at those people. Don't do it. Because what's going to happen toward the end, you're going to be shocked. But see, this is the thing about sin. If you don't replace it with God's word or being in the presence of God, it's just going to come back even worse. It's only going to just come back worse. So the thing is, once you give something up, you got to fill that void. You got to fill it. You got to fill it with praise. You got to fill it with reading his word. You got to fill it because guess what? Something else will come in and come twice as bad as what was already there. These are the truths of the word of God. So here, here we, we have this. Sometimes we are just repeat offenders. We keep doing the same sin over and over and over again. And the thing about it is, the bad thing about this is, we always say this, God is still working on me. We use that as an excuse for your wicked mouth. We use that as an excuse for what you do to people and justify it. We use that as an excuse huh, to attack someone that God is still working on me. No, 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 God ain't working on that. God don't deal with the ugly. He don't deal with that. Huh? So here, sometimes we are the repeat offenders and we just justify it. They had it coming. No, they did not. Huh? If God saved you, you're supposed to be on display. You're supposed to be on display. That, guess what? They're attacking the Jesus inside of you. They're not attacking you. They're attacking the Jesus inside of you. So what you have to do is control yourself and ask God to come in and to deal with those repeat sins, the mouth, the actions, Sometimes we even want revenge, and God says, revenge is mine. There's one thing that I know is God can get somebody far worse than you. Huh? Put it in God's hands. God is the one who said, let there be. And there was. That's the God we serve. He's the one who said, you know what? I am literally means whatever you need. I'm that. Huh? He's saying, you know what? When you were in captivity, I'm the one who set you free. You know when you was on drugs and you're not on drugs anymore? I released that from you. You remember when you were broke? I released that from you. I, froze, I, I took away your sins, and yet and still you don't trust him yet. He's done all these things. At what point in your Christian journey will you give over the steering wheel so God can guide you? At what point will you get that idea that God knows what's best? 
We cannot straddle the fence of faith because God says, guess what? Either you're hot or you're cold. And if you're one of them, I'd rather not even deal with you so I will spit you out of my mouth. God is saying these truths to us here in, 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 in Palm Sunday. Wait, guess what? These people want the Romans dead. Not even thinking that, you know what? We serve a God that shows no favor. That's what the Bible says. So that means if God is going to kill them for their sins, that means he got to kill you for your sins. Huh? You can't wish something on somebody else that you're not willing to take upon yourself. And we have to understand these truths. We serve a God that shows no favor. So guess what? Even though they may be bad, God loves them too. God so loved the world. Somebody help me preach this message. Huh? God so loved the what? Everybody. So... Don't put yourself in a position to be judged. So here we are. We got the, 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 we got the finger pointers. We got the repeat offenders. And now, finally, we got the low expectations. And sometimes, you know what? Instead of us worshiping Jesus, sometimes we worship the genie that they wish Jesus, Jesus was. Sometimes we only want Jesus in our business when things get so bad that guess what? Now I can rub the lantern and get my wish. That ain't how Jesus rolls. You know that. That Jesus doesn't come in to be put into this box or this frame that you put him in. He's bigger than that. That when he comes into your life, he's there to take over your life. But the question is, are you going to let him in? When are you going to let him into your life so that he can bless you the way you need to be blessed? Because when you look at the story, these people wanted the Romans dead. And they were pointing the fingers and they were having a party with a God that they had put in a box that he's supposed to come down and fight their battles for, for them. And the thing about it is, they were thinking about the wrong battle. They were thinking about a physical battle. This battle was a spiritual battle. That would, that would, that would actually make sense why he came the way he came. He came as the king of peace. That's why he came. Because if he came as the warrior, that means we all be dead. But he came with a plan in place. The plan was, guess what? It's not the person, it's the sin that I need to deal with. And I say thank you, Jesus, for him dealing with the sin that lies within the spiritual DNA of our flesh. We were born and shaped in iniquity. Jesus came for that. And that's one of the reasons why we need to give the steering wheel over to Jesus. is because we don't understand everything. That he will direct our path. These are the truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That here, these people were pointing a finger. They were repeat offenders. And they had low expectations. But this is the good thing. And this is the thing that you should shout about. Jesus came for all of that stuff. All of it. He came for the lies. He came for the rapists. He came for the molesters. He came for the liars. He came for the thieves. He came for those that think they're righteous. He came for all of these things. Like I said, Diddy was there. Jay-Z was there. R. Kelly was there. 
Trump was there. He died for their sins too. He died for this. Doesn't matter how bad you think it is. Don't you be like them Jews and point out somebody else's sin until you deal with your own. So here we are. Jesus is coming in on this white horse, and they're thinking that, okay, Jesus is going to come, and he's going to destroy these Romans, and, and we're going to be okay. We're going to be free. Little did they know that Jesus didn't just come for the Romans. He came for them too. He came for their sins. How dare you think just because you're the chosen ones, you can break God's laws? How dare you think that just because you know what, I blessed you that I won't bless somebody else. How dare you think that just because you know what, they don't bathe on a regular basis that I won't bless them. How dare you think that just because you got a good job, you're better than everybody else in the sanctuary. How dare you, just because you have a position in the church, you think that you can talk to people however you want to talk to people. How dare you? How dare you? God is telling us this. You got to keep in mind, they were cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Next thing you know, they flipped the script. Crucify him? Crucify him? Where did that come from? It came from the heart. They were deceived. They didn't come out to Bible study. They didn't have no one to follow. So they followed what was available to them. So now they're deceived. They're, they're, like I said, it was a party in the beginning, but all of a sudden things had changed. And crucify him, crucify him. The Bible tells us that the heart is wicked. Jeremiah 17 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who can understand the heart? It switches like day and night. One minute you're for him. Oh I, I know I got a testimony here. Who are married up in the place? Who's married up in here? Who has a significant other? Who was married, all right? So now, one minute, you can love him to pieces. Oh, he is Prince Charming. Oh my goodness, he can't do no wrong. Let him not wash the dishes. Oh my goodness, lazy good for nothing, huh? Huh? Let, let, let somebody forget to put down the toilet seat. Oh my goodness, huh? You're inconsiderate somebody, huh? You see how things can change at the drop of a dime. But when you are prayed up and you're in the word of God and God is in your life, that sometimes you can sit there and you'll have more patience than normal. When you sit there and say, well, he put it down yesterday. He just forgot to do it today. Oh, he washed the dishes all last week. He just forgot to do it this day. Sometimes we, we, we the heart, I'm telling you, who can understand it? Who can understand it? One day you can go to work and your boss is just as sweet as I don't know what. But the next day you'd be like, who are you? <laughs> These are the truths of the gospel. So Jesus is saying, look, you're sitting here pointing the fingers, but guess what? You're in a worse position than them because I gave you my word. So guess what? Now guess what? This is the first day that guess what? I'm going to start this process called salvation. That guess what? After these seven days, guess what? I'm going to do something that's going to blow your mind that only a king from heaven can do. So these are the truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ where we sit down and we have to examine ourselves. Where are we in our Christian walk? Huh? Do, do we point the finger? Absolutely. 
Are we repeat offenders? Absolutely. Sometimes we have low expectations for Jesus Christ, no matter what he's done in your life. I need for you to change that thinking. Huh? Because that's stinking thinking. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or even think. These are the things that we have to hold on to, and this is the process. This is the first day of Holy Week that, guess what? We got something to look forward to that Jesus is going to bring us a W in spite of what it looks like. Amen. That even though they were worshiping the wrong king, even though there was sin amongst the multitude, even though there was repeat offenders and had low expectations, Jesus came because he set this stage up for victory. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what's going on behind the scenes. God is setting you up for a comeback. God is setting you up for victory. Don't you throw up your hands. Don't you bow down to, to, to money. Don't you bow down to because of your Prince Charming came in your life. You worship the true and living God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The stage is set, y'all. Now all you got to do is say, lights, camera, action. The stage has been set. And despite what you feel, trust the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him. And let him direct your path. Praise the Lord, everyone. Give an honor to God and all he's done in all of our lives. I see the blessings that God has put in your life. I see it. I see the transformations that are going on in your lives. Keep worshiping God. Just because things are going good, trust me, a storm is coming. You need that praise, that same praise. When he does something good, same praise when things are not going so good in your life. What I would like to do is I would like to open up the church. I want to offer fellowship and fellowship here at the Baptist Temple Church. We're a church family. And I don't know, my family, we stick together. We don't always agree, but we stick together. That when you need something, and I have it, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Family, that praise together. Come on, somebody finish it for me. Praise the Lord. I want to offer this here at the Baptist Temple Church. There may be someone here in the sanctuary that may not know Jesus and the pardon of their sins. We would love for you to be a part of our family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else that your life has been set for victory? But you can't see it on your own. Allow God to open your eyes and see he's working things out for your good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't let nothing block your blessing. I encourage you to come up right now in the name of Jesus. 
give your heart and your mind to Christ and see and taste what the Lord has done, what he's able to do. Is there anyone? If you believe in our heart that Christ died for you, you shall be saved. If you call upon the name of Jesus, God will respond. Is there anyone? Second call. Maybe you drifted away from the church. And you want to get back in fellowship with Jesus Christ. We have some amazing teachers here. We have some amazing preachers here. We serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Is there anyone that would like to rededicate their life to Christ? On this Palm Sunday, hallelujah. While you're still standing, I ask that you come to the altar for prayer. sins you've been carrying, this is the place where you let it go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we just say thank you, Lord God, for the souls, Lord God, that stepped out on faith, Lord Jesus. But Lord God, this is just the beginning, Lord. So Father God, we ask that you guide them and keep them, Lord God, and allow them to take the steering wheel. And Lord, we're gathered here, Lord God, in front of your altar, Lord God, to lose weight, Lord God. Father God, there's so many things that we're carrying around, Lord God. Some of us are carrying around bitterness and anger and frustration. Some of us are carrying around depression, Lord God. Some are even carrying around suicidal thoughts, Lord Jesus. Some of us, Lord God, have lost our jobs and we don't know which way to turn, Lord. Lord God, we got single mothers here right in the sanctuary, Lord trying to put food on the table, Lord God. There's someone that's dealing with stress so bad that they feel like they're about to lose their mind. But we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think, Lord. So Lord God, we ask that you come in right now and cover us, Lord God. Hide us underneath your wings, Lord God. Feed us, Lord God, our daily bread, Lord God so they can nourish us, Lord God, so we can go back out, Lord God, and deal with those obstacles of life, Lord Jesus. Father God, there's somebody, Lord God, in the hospital right now, Lord God, fighting for their life, Lord God. And Lord God, somebody's right here in the midst, Lord God, praying on their behalf. Or maybe, Lord God, someone's relative, Lord God, might be facing a prison sentence, Lord. Someone in the multitude, Lord God, might be right here praying on behalf, Lord God, of their loved one, Lord God. We're praying for our youth, Lord Jesus, how they're running the street and trying to raise themselves, Lord God. There are those, Lord God, that are on the street, Lord God, trying to make ways for themselves, Lord God, and they're always coming up empty. So, Father God, we're praying, Lord God, for all these in Jesus' name, Lord God. We need you, Lord God, more than ever before, Lord Jesus, that, Lord God, we just trust you and we put everything into your hands, Lord God. So whatever the problem is, Lord God, Lord God, it ain't what it seems, Lord God. You set the stage up, Lord God, just right, Lord God. That Lord God, when we call upon your name, Lord God, things start to happen, Lord God. Things start to start to turn around, Lord God. The heart, our hearts start melting for you, Lord Jesus. So we just say thank you, Lord God, even in the midst of our storms. 
So, Father God, thank you, Lord God. We ask that you heal, Lord God. We ask that you restore. We ask that you redeem. We ask that you re revitalize, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, we just humble ourselves and just say, thank you, Lord God, because you are working things out for our good. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. children to come forth and look what God just did this morning. Ashley, what a mighty God. Ashley has stepped forth. You believe that Jesus Christ is in your life. You are coming as Christian experience. So you already been there. You now have to stand forth, become a member of Baptist Temple Church and show who God has called you to. And Mr. Brother right here. Rich. Rich is about to get married on the 13th of April here at Baptist Temple Church. And look what God did. He made you the head of the house, brother. And now you have shown that you have given God your life. And this is what we look for. This is what we look for, my brother. Stay firm. Stay fast. Because today, today is the first day Satan is going to start working on you even more. And we're here for you and with you. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord for all three of you. Praise the Lord. I know that, Rich, I've seen you in back. I, I, I've seen God working on you. I, it was just a matter of time before God just cracked the seal. And he cracked the seal today. I'm grateful for your commitment. I've also seen you for some time coming in and out. And I was praying for you. And now guess what? God answers prayers. 
And I just know her. She has been a blessing to the Baptist Temple Church. And she's even been coming out to some of our events. Um, yeah. Deacon McNeil, I know he's ecstatic right now. He might not. He's a mellow type of fellow. But I know on the inside, he's shouting hallelujah for his daughter. Praise the Lord for all three of you. And I'm just so grateful that you chose the Baptist Temple Church. You could choose any place, but you chose here. God, I'm trying to tell you, God is going to do something. God is going to work on you. And we're going to be here to be witnesses of what God can do. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, sweetheart. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Say hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I'll start off with Rich, because me and Rich have been on the phone recently preparing for his wedding to his bride that's sitting in the back, amen? And like they say, you're about to be the head of your household. And being the head, you need Jesus to, to keep you going, to inspire you, to send you in the right direction, but to God be the glory that you came down, the shackles came off, and you was able to come down, amen? Thank you. To you, young lady. What, I, you should have seen her. She, look at her. She's still standing up. Hey, man. <laughs> She's still standing up. We are just blessed to have you. We're blessed that you were able to come down and say, Lord, you know what? It's time. Sometimes we, 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 we do this thing, but then sometimes something hit us. The light goes off, and we say, it's time. So we are grateful that you said it's time. Amen. And we are, we are here for you for whatever you need. Amen. And for the daughter, Deacon. Amen. You, you have been here. You have even came and, and taught our youth um, on, our, on our graduation on counseling. So you have been here, and now the Lord has blessed you to come on down to be amongst the rest of us. Amen. 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 So we are blessed to have you. We are. And please lean on us. Please take a number. Well, I have your number. But please take a number to someone that when you are going through, that you can call on somebody who can call on Jesus. Amen. Ain't nothing like calling on somebody who can put, lift you up in prayer and tell you what the Lord does say of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we are blessed to have y'all here at Baptist Temple Church. Amen. Amen. All right. This is what God does. The reason why I had these two young men is because they are candidates to be the pastor. And once you get the pastor, follow him. Remember that as he follows God, Amen. you follow him. Amen. And I wanted you guys to be able to see that. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. There's nothing too hard for our God. Just let him in. Let him do what he does. He's been doing it since the beginning of time. He's good at it. He always was. So how about we just let him do what he does? Amen. And ask everyone to stand. Amen. Once again, I do want to remind all of those that are going through life's challenges, I have no idea what you're going through, but you do. And maybe someone else does too. But things ain't always what they seem. That if you're going through a crisis, let God work it out. Call upon his name. Humble yourself and pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord the dawn of a new day, Lord God. Once again, Lord God, you have given us the bread of life that, Lord God, we can go out there, Lord God, and deal with what we have to deal with. Now, Father God, <clears throat> whatever we have to go through, Lord God, we take it as, Lord God, you're just making a way out of no way. You're opening doors that no one can close, and you're closing some doors that no man can open. And for that, we say hallelujah that your yeses are blessed as well as your noes. So we give you the highest praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, that your word says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but that's not the end of the scripture, but God delivered them from them all. So we bow before you, Lord God, in humility, Lord God, 
in reverence of who you are. You're a loving and kind God that cares that every tear that falls from our eyes, Lord God, you know exactly what we're going through. You know exactly what temptations we're facing, Lord God. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you do what you do and you be God. Elohim, Jehovah, we thank you, Lord. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Let everyone say amen. Let the children of God Yeah.